Hey there guys, welcome back to another YouTube video and today we're going to be showing you how to set up your own interdiction matrix. This is a method of defense for your base and will allow you to protect yourself and confiscate items or kill mobs or prevent mob spawning inside your area that you want to protect or whatever. But before we start the actual tutorial, I'd like to say a big thank you to the Oblivion Vault server. Um, they're Great place, check it out. I put it in the description, banner on screen now. Just have a look at that. That's where I'm playing at the moment. So if you want to go and see me, um, check them out. They're pretty cool. Um, so onto the actual video today. We're going to be showing you how to set up this interdiction matrix here. Um, so let's just look up the mod that we're going to be looking at. Uh, at mod.modularforcefield. There we go. So for this, if we just set the time to day. Um, the basic setup for this interdiction matrix today is going to be um, our power source, represented here by an ultimate energy cube with an infinite battery inside it. Uh, then this is going to be connected to um, five coercion derivers. Each of these, in my case, I've put a stack of speed modules in just to speed up the process. Um, just adding more coercion derivers will do the same job as adding speed modules. So that's fine, you can just add more coercion drivers if you've got those, or just make the speed modules too and copy this exactly. Um, so then uh, I'd like to add that you have to make sure that each of these are all on the same frequency. I used a frequency card, I'll show you how to use a frequency card now. There's a frequency card here, if I take one of those. You can shift right click it and it will generate a random frequency. And then if you right click that, or shift right click that on one of the machines, it will reset the frequency of each of those machines so that you can see in the left of the screen in the chat there it set the frequency of all of them to 2 which is the frequency of the card so there we go all of the machines are on the same frequency we're also going to need to grab ourselves a um, oh hang on before we grab ourselves the next thing um, the next part of the machine that we're going to is this Fortron capacitor you can see here that this has the same frequency again as all of these this distributes the power. Keep this on equalized because that's going to be important um, for that. If we take this away, equalize spread Fortran energy with the machine's base and the machine's capacity percentage. Have that on there, and then add some speed modules into that as well. You can't just add more Fortran capacitors. Um, just limit yourself to one of those. Then we move on to the actual interdiction matrix. Um, a warning here: do not turn this on as of yet. You're going to need to grab yourself. A biometric identifier which is this machine here this is essential for the process of setting up a interdiction matrix properly because this will be able to exclude you from the interdiction matrix's effects because if you put an anti-personnel module in here and you don't program yourself on the on the biometric identifier or put your identification card in uh, the interdiction matrix will kill you as well as your enemy um, and that will take you out of your base. So inside this biometric identifier you can see lots of different holes here. We're going to have to set our frequency to 2. It needs to be the same frequency. And we're also going to need to get ourselves an identification card, this down here. Um, so then just hold your identification card. It's quite a simple crafting recipe, just a blank card in the middle. Um, and then just right click this while looking at a block or something and that will set it to your identification card. You can see I've got the squid on the card and my name is on the username there. Now you can put this into the right slot at the top here. Click on all of these things, this will give you all of the rights. You can read all of those and that will tell you what it needs to do. Um, the identification card will then go into this master slot here and you can click the on button and then all the lights will come on. This doesn't actually require any power at all so you don't need to worry about that but it still needs the same frequency as all of your other machines, especially this interdiction matrix. So inside the interdiction matrix, there are various things that we can do. We can have the anti-personnel module, which we put in here, and some scale modules. Then when we turn this on, the anti-personnel module is hence going to kill any players that are inside this 16 block area. But we can't see that in action so I've chosen to use an anti-hostile module which will kill anything like a creeper, a skeleton, that will pr uh, protect your base against 
mob griefing. Um, it's also quite good if you take this into the end and you set this up because Enderman will teleport inside the interdiction matrix and it will kill them and you can collect the ender pearls. I quite like doing that. So then we're going to use a spawn creeper egg here and you should be able to see that the creepers will die randomly because of this interdiction matrix. That one stayed alive for quite a long time then. So there we go, we can see that the interdiction matrix works. That will work the same uh, if you replace the creepers with um, players and we had the anti-personal in there, then that would that would kill the players too. So if we turn off the interdiction matrix now, we can um, take away our biometric identifier because I want to show you the next thing that we're going to do. Let's take away that. Oh, no, I didn't actually mean to break that. Let's put that back down. Put that back down, set the frequency to 2. So now we're going to go over the um, confiscation module. This is something else that would be quite commonly used. So we're going to put the confiscate module in there. And we're going to put the scale module in here. Um, so because we don't have the biometric identifier, this is going to affect us. But it's not going to take any of our items if we just turn it on like that. For it to confiscate items, you have to tell it that only one item is allowed. So if we hit this bottom button here, it's going to go for allowed. And then if we just put one gunpowder in there, that's going to tell the machine that it will confiscate every single item other than gunpowder. You can put a really rare item in here or something that um, your opponent's not likely going to have. Say something like um, a half-charged energy cube. If you put a half-charged energy cube in there, um, it will be a separate item ID and um, stuff. And then that will tell them that it will confiscate everything except that random ID. So then... Um, when we switch this on, uh, we're going to need to put a chest on the top, actually. So if we grab a chest, you can stick a chest on the top of the machine, like this. And then you can just flick the switch, and it will confiscate all of your items. You can see everything that was in my inventory has been confiscated, including the armour that I was wearing. So that could be very useful if you're playing on a server. But you can see it didn't confiscate my gunpowder, because that's the one thing that is allowed in the interdiction matrix. Um, yeah. And you can use any of these modules here. You can use block alter modules that stops people from placing or breaking blocks. Uh, block access, they can't right click on blocks. Um, warn modules if you just wanted to send them away. Um, I think you can make a, a personalized warning. I think I haven't actually messed around with that yet. Um, shock modules, that will just give people like a bit of a, uh, an, like an electric shock sort of thing rather than actually killing them but yes thank you for watching that's been my tutorial on an interdiction matrix and how to set it up and how a few basic um, modules work again they can take their items back but it will just confiscate them again so they can't really do anything about that and on multiplayer servers they're not going to be able to teleport away quick enough to do that so yeah thank you very much for watching guys check out oblivion vaults in the ip in the description and I will see you in the next video, guys. See you later. Bye.